Hello students. So uh, today I'm excited actually because uh, I'm going to start or rather we are going to start the control theory part. Okay. So we are done with the vibrations theory. So the control engineering part uh, will have different textbook. Okay. So the textbook is uh, modern control engineering by Ogata. Okay, so here basically today we are going to look at, we will make some connection between what we have studied earlier. As I keep on telling that whatever we have studied so far are, or what I mean is uh, what we have studied in vibrations are also applicable control theory. You know? So control theory as such, it deals with most of time equations only, the transfer function as, uh, uh, and all. So, in vibration system is is the one kind of a system, right? So, we will see in the details. We will relate whatever we have studied. We are going to relate with that, and we will get to know other types of systems as well. And from there, we will slowly we will go in slip into the control theory part. So today is a kind of transition basically. So this is what I'm going to do. So far, we have been just studying, we have some spring, then damper, and there is a mass here. Right? So we have K, C here like this. And there is a force we apply here. So force we say is, this is input. And because of uh, force let's uh, apply it like this one so this is a force which is input yeah and this is uh, x displacement which is output yeah so this is output yeah so like this and we have already studied the equation that it follows and we know that the equation is mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx equal to f yeah, and f will be a function of t, x is also a function of t. Yeah, and we have seen already, we take a Laplace transform of all this. Yeah, so mx double dot cx dot plus kx equal to Laplace transform, let's, let's call it a small f. Yeah, so a small f function of t. And then we have small f function of t like this. And uh, what we get is uh, M, then S square plus C S plus K, then K A, uh, sorry, X. So this is X, X as a function of S equal to F function of S, where, not where, but uh, we are assuming 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 x at time equal to 0 equal to 0 and x dot at t equal to 0 equal to 0 otherwise this term will also appear there but when we are going to find out the transfer function we always use this one right so this is used for transfer function so what we get is this is input uh, input this is output so output over input so x s over f s this is output yeah so this is output over input is also known as transfer function, right? You say TS, we can say, right? Transfer function. So, transfer function. So, we, we use this term a lot and all will be in uh, Laplace, like in S domain, a yeah? complex frequency domain. So, this is S, XS plus FS will be equal to 1 over m s square plus uh, c s plus k so this we know already yeah so the, these things it uh, relates to the the spring mass damper system rest we can soon uh, see the special cases of this now so far what we have done is mass was always there yeah so because of mass only there is a vibration if there is no mass, no vibration, then what happens? Because k root k over m is the, the frequency, right? Natural frequency. So k is also important, m is also important, right? 
C is not that important. C is rather it acts against the vibration. It tries to stop the vibration, right? So that's why this one. You can say that damper is kind of used to control the vibration. Yeah. So this is a con uh, controlling the uh, vibration, but this is a passive vibration. Passive vibration means there is no like electrical electricity used to uh, no uh, uh, there is. No, uh, in this case, there is no electronic system or something which is going to use to the the mitigate vibration. Yeah. To, what we are uh, what we are going uh, doing here? Just we have some passive thing. Passive thing meaning just mechanical thing, non electrical thing that we use it automatically. It like uh, if you don't have uh, a damper, then little bit of disturbance. It goes like this, right? And it will keep on going like this one. So this is without C, right? Without C. Now, if you have a, a damper there, then depending on uh, depending on the value of C, right? If it is under damped, then this uh, this will go like this. It will go like this one, right? and then it will be zero. So. This damper is actually going to control the vibration automatically. So this is a passive vibration control, you can say this, this is a passive vibration control. As opposed to active, okay? And uh, if you want to use active, how, how will you do it? Yeah, so same problem, same, you have a spring and mass system and you are going to use the active vibration control. And how will you do it? Let us draw the same, the same as spring mass system. So this is a spring K, and this is mass M. Right? It is like this one, okay? Now, what we want to do, the equation in this case, of course, is Amx double dot plus Kx equal to F, uh, a small F, let's write a small F now, Ft. Right, so like this one. Now, wh what are you going to do? Little bit of disturbance. Let us say you have this kind of device. Yeah, that this could be in the MEMS, for example, MEMS device that you can make. Uh, you know, there's a microchip that that could have some kind of beam can deliver a beam, right? A small made made of some silicon, right? So, and here little bit of actuation it will start uh, vibrating. You know, and uh, you want to stop it. Yeah, N not uh, keep on going uh, infinitely as it does, right? So, since it, there is no damper, it can go on basically. Well, I uh, basically that theoretically like that. Yeah. So in that case, if you want to have also a mechanical or active uh, damper, so that it it uh, start vibrating, but uh, automatically it's controlled basically. Yeah. So then what will you do? One of the way will be to actually have a kind of sensor. What do you do? So let us say a sensor. So the velocity center, sensor. Velocity sensor. So let us say there is a something here which senses the velocity. Yeah, here it um, some, somehow measures the velocity here, right? And then what, what, uh, uh, what are you going to do? Uh, this uh, sensor, which will sense x dot, yeah, so x is in this direction, and then accordingly, it will apply the force, let us say. So, if x dot is positive, this is the, let us say there is the actuator here. So, this is a velocity sensor, let us say that there is some uh, black box here, yeah, black box or some circuitry or something, yeah, so it comes, the input comes from the sensor and from here there is the actuator. So this is actuator and let us say this accordingly applies the force basically. So if the velocity is like this one, accordingly if, this, if there is a force which applies upward. So if the x dot is downward, it applies a force cx double dot it applies offward. Okay, so what it is, what it is doing? Earlier what we used, 
we use the it's just a damper automatically we got the vibration control in this what, uh, same thing you can do actively what we are saying active control active vibration control this is one example there may be other ways so what uh, what do you do there is a velocity sensor from there and what do you get that uh, in fact in this case uh, black the black box could be a just a, a gain basically you are magnifying the the sensor output yeah so there will be just amplifier right amplifier is yeah so whatever you value get you get um, the, this is x dot here yeah, this is the amplifier may let us say uh, k1 is the gain so here you have k1 times x dot and then uh, there is actuator force right so the, whatever the value is the, let, let's call it k2 is gain another gain yeah so uh, the force is equal to the force going to apply is k2 times whatever the input is right so k1 x dot let us say right? so let's say the force f which applies upward yeah so this f becomes equal to uh, k1 k2 times x dot right so if uh, it goes upward velocity is upward and hence it will take a negative value and accordingly force will be downward in this case so in velocity is downward force will be upward if the velocity is upward force will be downward so you are controlling electronically yeah so the, the, for now hey, there could be an electromagnet which actually accordingly uh, uh, the force changes whatever you get the value value of the say voltage here some voltage of, uh, in the circuit based on that it will apply force like that so anyway so these are just block diagrams but it tells you it is doing the same thing and the, if you write the equation equation of this what we get to know is that there will be if it comes by fx then there will be force uh, uh, kx then there is a force which is upward which is upward is also k1 times k2 x dot yeah and that means uh, if x is this direction y, uh, or x x dot or x double dot what do we get we get actually mx double dot equal to minus kx minus k1 k2 x dot right that, that is what the equation is and what you get simply is mx double dot plus k1 k2 x dot plus kx equal to zero okay so k1 k2 you can write it that c basically right so the cx dot plus kx equal to zero what you see here these two gains basically what you have here is one amplifier to just magnify to amplify the signal the whatever you get from the velocity sensor and then what you do there is an actuator here meaning that we are going to produce some force there may be some solenoid for example yeah and uh, uh, and the, it has its own gain yeah let's say k2 so to, so what you get is basically it does the same thing as uh, done by a damper actually so see the damping coefficient yeah so that is uh, c equal to k1 into k1 times k2 yeah so this uh, same thing you are doing but you are doing with some electronic circuitry right so this is what is called active vibration control but here in this uh, uh, course the control doesn't mean the control of vibration yeah so this vibration control is included there yeah but this control is not specifically to control vibration i'm just telling you the example so how the what is the role of controller what do you mean by controller here it tells you a controller is there it automatically controls like this one yeah yeah so the idea is to actually in this case the vibration will not keep on going infinitely uh, because of the damper automatically it will stop the value of c that is k1 times k2 becomes important here and if it is uh, 
uh, under damped, you will see there will be vibration. This over damped, there will not be vibration. Yeah, and uh, uh, photically damp also, also it will not be vibration. Yeah, so accordingly you design. If there is there is some critical thing where uh, you don't want any vibration to happen, the, your system is like this. You cannot do anything about it. But uh, you also want just that if the some force is there because of some disturbance, it should not keep on vibrating like this one. You know? So th for that, you will have this kind of circuitry to prevent or what is called is active vibration or you have a damper to actually control it without using any electronics. This vibration example also give you a few other things. Yeah, so uh, we have a spring mass damper system, original one, KCM, okay, this is FT and this is XT, right? So this is input and this is output, yeah? Okay, now general purpose we wrote the equation like uh, AMX double dot plus CX dot plus KX equal to FT. Now we can have various combinations. It's possible that M equal to zero, and C is also equal to zero. So we have simply Kx equal to Ft. And what you see is uh, output is proportional to input, right? And then the for this one, a transfer function is Ts equal to 1 over ms square plus Cs plus, call it K, yeah? So, but if you put uh, M for this condition, yeah? So transfer function Ts will be nothing but simply you put m equal to 0, c equal to 0, you get 1, one over k, that's it. So just a gain basically. Also you can call it, this is a, basically a constant. Yeah. So that really means what kind of system will be like this one? This will be simply a, a spring, nothing. So this system, this tells you just this system, this is also a system. Yeah. The order is 0, zeroth order system. That means that there is no differential equation. This is proportional, the input is equal to output. That's what it is, uh, not equal to, but proportional to output, the proportional system. We call it proportional system or zero order uh, system. Okay, now the, uh, this is the case one. Now case two will be where we can say m equal to zero. Okay, c not equal to zero, k not equal to zero, right? Okay, then what kind of system you have? Then you will have like this, a spring and damper, that's it, there's no other thing, yeah? Okay, there are material, the viscoelastic material, is, is this model is for the viscoelastic material, so mass is negligible in comparison if you compare with uh, the spring, the constant and, and the damper. Well, you have to compare the forces, so the inertial forces, Mx double dot, is way uh, lower than the force due to a stiffness and force due to the damping. Yeah, so for this one, if you put uh, in this equation, if you put m equal to zero, you get the equation for this, and the equation for this is cx dot plus kx equal to ft in the equation. What you see is this is first order differential equation, or that's why you call it first order system. Yeah, so this is first order system because this is first order differential equation. Cx dot K, Kx plus equal to Ft and accordingly the transfer function Ts for this will put these values here. Right? So m will be 0 so you get Cs plus K. Yeah? So what you see just one s here. Right? This one is uh, second order differential equation is so it's a second order system. Right? It's a general purpose. Yeah? And uh, accordingly you have s square term coming here. Okay? So you have this combination. Third combination uh, will be where you have just damper, nothing else, right? So say you have just damper like this. This is also a system. Yeah, so you can put the same value and you can find out here. So equation for this will, it will be Cx dot equal to Ft and transfer function Ts will be equal to one over Cs. That's it, yeah? And so, like uh, in case of the fourth, maybe just the mass and the spring and mass only, Km. In this case, the uh, equation becomes 
के एक्स प्लस एम एक्स डबल डॉट इक्वल टू एफ टी वाट यू सी हियर एक्स डबल डॉट हेन्स सेकेंड ऑर्डर सिस्टम दिस इज ऑल्सो सेकेंड ऑर्डर सिस्टम सेकेंड ऑर्डर सिस्टम ओके एंड देन द ट्रांसफर फंक्शन इन दिस केस यू पुट द सी इक्वल टू जीरो सो एंड वाट यू गेट वन ओवर एम एस स्क्वायर प्लस के इज द इक्वेशन हियर एस स्क्वायर But if you see is is a square term here, that means it's second order, indicative of second order system. So same thing we are looking differently now, and we are actually going to uh, understand the behavior of this system for now. This first order system. What is the behavior now that we did not study earlier? This looks simple. The k and c. That's it. But right now, based on our knowledge, we cannot guess what is the how it is going to behave. Behave means. If you give uh, a step input, how it is going to behave, or if you give uh, the impulse input, how you are going to behave, but you know how this is going to behave, because you have studied for with mass, but in this case there is no mass, then no, what to do? All those things we will study basically in your textbook. The chapter five it starts with uh, this only. It does. First order system like this one. If you give the impulse input or the step input, how it is going to behave? Okay, so before that, in your textbook cha chapter two is just about a transfer function and all which already we understand, yeah. And uh, chapter three is about the learning a different kind of the systems like electrical and mechanical system. This is mechanical system, you know already, right? So he is talking about the vibration system only as a mechanical system, and I introduced to various types basically, yeah. So. The, and uh, this system is not exactly about the i mean this uh, um, uh, control system not about the only the mechanical system it is applicable to electrical systems only but so that's why we will also study electrical system yeah and electrical system because this is a course which actually gives you uh, a transition uh, from mechanical to electrical side Uh, for uh, robotics is a must course yes yeah, so a lot of things we will see with little bit of electronics we will uh, just uh, touch basically we are not going to details of course uh, that's uh, electrical is not my uh, basically domain so uh, whatever uh, basically we can understand from mechanical point of view we will do that okay okay uh, and uh, Uh, before we delve into the uh, computer the, the electronics part let's look at i, I will just give you what kind of uh, problem you may get during your home assignment okay and uh, you have to do it related to what i have discussed right now i may ask a question that there is a spring mass damper system something like this a spring mass damper system there is a mass here this is k this c and there is a base vibration this one okay so this is going up and down as y t and the, this is input yeah base excitation and this is output output is what x yeah so this is x was like this one so this is input base uh, movement this is output okay and i will uh, i may ask what is the transfer function for this yeah and then how to solve okay well if you see the our uh, earlier the vibration uh, part what we did you know, we we can draw the the free body diagram if we x this side here because of the force this will be k we can uh, assume that x is greater than uh, greater than y let us say y is this way yeah so uh, x is greater than y so hence uh, there will be a stretch yeah and hence it will try to pull it up so k and then we get uh, x x minus y and similarly this will be c x dot minus y dot yeah so this is and there is a Uh, there is no force uh, it is just like this one yeah so equation will be uh, minus k 
के एक्स माइनस वाई माइनस सी एक्स डॉट माइनस वाई डॉट इक्वल टू एम एक्स डबल डॉट एंड हेंस वी गेट इक्वेशन इक्वल टू एम एक्स डबल डॉट या प्लस के प्लस सी एक्स डॉट सी एक्स डॉट प्लस के एक्स इक्वल टू सी वाई डॉट प्लस के वाई या सो दिस वॉट यू गेट ओके वी आर अज्यूमिंग दैट एट एक्स जीरो इक्वल टू जीरो राइट वी आर अज्यूमिंग लाइक दिस वन एक्स देन डॉट जीरो इक्वल टू जीरो एंड वी आर ऑल्सो अज्यूमिंग वाई जीरो इक्वल टू जीरो सो ऑल इज स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द जीरो समथिंग लाइक दिस ओके सो देन वी वॉन्ट टू फाइंड आउट द क्वेश्चन बी बी विल बी वॉट इज ट्रांसफर फंक्शन राइट सो ट्रांसफर फंक्शन इक्वल टू वा आई मे आस्क द लाइक इफ द ट्रांसफर फंक्शन टी एस इज लाइक दिस ए एस स्क्वायर प्लस बी एस प्लस सी एस डिवाइडेड बाई नॉट सी लेट्स कॉल डी E s square plus f s g not s here like this one. Okay. If T s is like this one for this system, then there may be some matching problem here. I will ask you a equal to what, b equal to what, c equal to what. Sorry, not c but d. D equal to what. E equal to what? F equal to what? G equal to what? Right? I can ask that. Okay. So to do that, well, what you do here? Here we take Laplace transform. We get m s square plus c s plus k uh, multiplied by x s equal to c. Then uh, s plus k. Yeah. Then y s. Okay, the this is output. So x s over y s, y s, which is a term of function T s, will be equal to C s plus k divided by m s square plus C s plus k. Yeah. So this is the answer. So, so your answer will be like uh, a will be a will be equal to zero, right? Because the no s square, uh, b will be equal to c, right? Okay, then D will be equal to K, then E will be equal to M, uh, F equal to C, and K will be equal to uh, G will be equal to K. So this will be your in matching time. This will be the your right answer. Yeah. So just to see, see the uh, this we never uh, studied in terms of transfer function, but uh, what it tells you that the 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 s term so the complex frequency term may happen in numerator as well not only it will be in denominator but numerator also yeah so this gives you that example and this also tells you this kind of problem may come in your assignment or in your quizzes okay so now let's look at the electrical system yeah so there could be some electrical circuit and uh, it could be something like this so here it is Inductor, okay, and then the resistance, yeah, and there there will be a capacitor like this, yeah, and then you have a this is input, and E this is what this is output is, yeah. So this L, E this is R, this is C, large circuit, and here it is input. So you can say E I is input voltage. Input voltage, and there is uh, here you can also say is ground this one. So this is uh, E I, okay, and uh, here this is E out, okay, E O, okay. So this is output voltage. Okay, so like this one. Now 
here we are going to find out the, the what is the transfer function yeah so again uh, we are not electrical engineers however we do have some ideas based on uh, you also has electrical engineering courses electronics engineering courses so based on that only it will do the basic idea the high school level uh, ideas only not uh, more than that okay so how the basically it, it voltage here is zero here e r yeah, there would be a voltage drop across all of them and we sum them together we should get e i right so let us say here uh, the circuit has e i e i a as a current yeah so like this one in this loop actually this is actually something like uh, you can also have like this this is l then this is r and this is c here right the, the, this one is like this one and then you, you, you are connecting like this like this one, okay? you are giving some voltage here so this voltage uh, you, uh, you can have a like this one this is ei here and you are finding out what is the value here with respect to that right so here this will be eo actually this is like this yeah so these are all in series connected like this one you apply a input uh, voltage ei and we are measuring what is the voltage here at this point right so this is a point let us say called point a point b this uh, c is there so not write c the point d let's call it so a b d point and the we at d point what is the uh, potential difference yeah so the voltage uh, relative voltage which is to this earth of course this is the so e i e naught so uh, this is what you are measuring here so this is the same circuit as these are these are same yeah so okay so now um, uh, all of them will have a same current ia that's going on because there's no other thing so there will be only one current so hence i'm doing like this one this is just for the measuring purposes it's like this one. so there will be a same current that goes around okay now given this one how to find out the potential uh, difference uh, across a capacity um, uh, inductor is given by l d i a d t so rate of change of the current is important here okay so this is how it is becomes plus around around this one you know this is r times i a that's it so i'm going to remove this one okay then there's a capacitor for capacitor the value becomes this is a you're going to integrate now the capacitor the property of that if you recall from your plus two or uh, your je days yeah so even your electrical engineering or electronics engineering classes so basically the voltage the q or the charge that one capacitor can hold is proportional to the this voltage right okay and hence q is equal to c times v right that, that, uh, that's what it is right so or and that tells you v equal to q over c yeah, so V is inversely proportional to C in this case, or you can say the V proportional to Q, where the constant of proportionality is one over C. So V like this one. Now that that really means we have to find out Q. Q is equal to I D T. Right? This is a, if you integrate it, you get Q. Right? So like this one because I equal to D Q over D T and hence you integrate it like this. So all those things you know already. So we write here one over C and then Q is equal to one over I D T. So this is what the voltage across this, yeah? Okay, and total, all of them is equal to E I, okay? So this is a function of T, of course, uh, depending on uh, our voltage, we might change accordingly the everything belongs change so e i a so i a is a function of time basically so that's why we're writing like that okay now the this one the the voltage drop across this one is the output which will be e naught so e naught 
t will be equal to simply just this part only so one c i a dt will be this so we got the t, two equations from there we have to find out the transfer function and how to find out this is input voltage this is output voltage yeah what we are getting here we are getting in terms of i but i a is not uh, neither input uh, uh, function or nor output function but i is some intermediate thing so we have to get rid of it okay so it, that we have to do because i a is a variable that we don't want what we want is in terms of e i and e not only yeah hence we are what, what you do in all the cases wherever you have to find out the transfer function you have a equation you take the laplace transform of that yeah and then you change in in the s from t domain you are changing to s domain yeah? complex frequency domain what is the meaning s you know basically uh, you understood uh, based on the vibration class okay so we have used that for uh, even for the the force vibration also we try to find out the what is the meaning of that okay so if you don't recall please go through the the force vibration uh, and in fact the uh, entire uh, uh, the, the lectures have uh, laplace transform where uh, i try to explain the meaning of a complex uh, uh, frequency s uh, uh, where it comes into picture okay so so here the um, yeah, if we take the laplace transform of this one what do we get so we get um, so we apply laplace transform this one okay and uh, from there we are going to get uh, l and this is d i a d t so we say i a with i a and s okay so the, the, uh, this one is for i a times s we have to also multiply it by s okay so since uh, where i a s is equal to laplace transform uh, laplace transform of i a t okay multiplied by s because this is a dif uh, differentiation of that so l i a s s and all other values we are assuming to zero yeah so what we are assuming is i a zero equal to zero right so accordingly or you uh, so because of that what you get is this value uh, plus r i a capital i a s okay done plus one over c and then this is integral for integral if for derivative if you have multiplied by s for integral if you recall from your mathematics class here the value will be 1 over s multiplied by i a s equal to okay equal to this is e i input s yeah so this is what you get after taking the laplace transform from here we will get the second one we get the 1 over c 1 over s i a s equal to e naught s that's what we get next we will find out the transfer function so transfer function uh, actually uh, transfer function and for that what do you want to find out output over input so e o s multiply divided by e i s so what is the meaning of that meaning of that is the laplace transform of e o divided by laplace transform of e i right so uh, this so this over this over this one so we have one over uh, c s okay multiplied by i a s okay divided by very wide all these things so we have l s plus r plus one over c s are multiplied by i a s yeah and this is equal to simply we get equal to like this one over 
one fold divided by, and then you have C and L here, right? So you get uh, L C L times C S square plus R times C S, and then plus you get one. That's it. So this is transfer function. You get T S. This is equal to transfer function. What you get from here, this the transfer function looks like the similar to what you have for the mass, the mass damper, mass string, uh, string mass damper system. Yeah. So we had S square here. We had M part, right? So for a string mass system, a string mass system. What did we have? We have one over m s square plus c s plus k, and this is equivalent to what? This is as if you can say this is equivalent to mass spring damper system with with m equal to l c, uh, then uh, c equal to a small c equal to r capital C. This is capac this is capacitance. Uh, this was the damping coefficient, okay, and then k equal to one. So you, you see here, as far as this uh, course is concerned, there is no difference between this uh, elastic circuit or a spring mass damper system. Yeah, as long as both stand positive. Here in this case also, R is positive only, L is positive only, C is positive only. So both are equivalent. So whatever property you can get from a string mass damper system the same kind of curve or uh, output or uh, behavior you see from here also so it's kind of a simulator you can make you can think about like when you have uh, your lab next semester if in project you can think about making some uh, simulator for a spring mass damper system just using lrc circuit and you can demonstrate all kinds of curves right so for example the how the underdamped will uh, look like, how overdamped will look like, uh, response, yeah, for a impulse, what, what kind of output it will have, or for uh, uh, you know, ramp, and so on, you can demonstrate basically. Yeah, so th those are the ideas also you get from here. One, one uh, thing we get out of here is uh, our equation is A naught S over E i S and equal to like this one. But differential equation, while different, here differential equation in, in a spring mass damper system, although we are saying both are equivalent, but things little bit looks different. Meaning that the differential equation from where we started was mx double dot, and like that, that means the input was there as a derivative. Yeah, so not input, but output was there as a derivative. In this case, there is something else which is derivative of. There is no derivative of E i or E naught. So something uh, system looks like a little bit different, yeah. But we can also go backward. So looking at the transfer function, can we find out the corresponding differential equation? And we may get some differential equation which will be different from this. That means our differential equation will not have IA terms, all those things will is not required to be there. Yeah? So let us see about it. So let's say start with the transfer function Ts, uh, which is equal to E naught S equal to uh, divided by E i S, S equal to 1 over L C S a square plus uh, R C S plus 1. Okay. Okay. Now, ne next thing is we are going to uh, multiply. Yeah. So, I mean, write in equation terms. So what do we get? We get L C S square plus R C S plus one multiplied by E naught S equal to E I S. So this is input. This is output. Yeah. Okay. So now you can write like this: L C uh, E naught S S square plus R C e naught s times s plus e naught s equal to 
Ei x. Now we are going to take the inverse Laplace transform of that. And what do we get? We get Lc. And if you take inverse Laplace transform of this one, we are going to get the d square e not dt square term plus rc here we get same thing one derivative here so not d square we get uh, d s uh, d e not over dt plus here we are going to get simple e not and that is equal to we are going to get e i t yeah so or you can write l c e naught double dot plus r c e naught single dot plus e naught equal to e i t so what you see here is a equation which is equivalent to m x double dot plus cx dot plus kx yeah equal to f t yeah where this is equivalent to m this is equivalent to c and k is equivalent to one right so this is one right? <clears throat> so we get the equivalent uh, differential equation. So we get the differential equation which looks like the original differential equation that you got for a string mass system and hence it makes sense now. Okay. Luckily there is a faster way of, of uh, finding out the transfer function for these electronic components LRC in the LRC circuit you know very easily. So now what it is uh, you have to do is you have to find out the impedance. So Impedance is uh, is uh, basically in complex uh, resistance, basically, right? So the uh, for R it has value. So it, it comes from like this. We have V equal to I times R. Yeah. So what you have is a if you take a Laplace transform, you get V S equal to R I S. So this is in complex form like this one, right? So you, you have uh, Vs equal to uh, Z I S. So this is called impedance. Impedance. Yeah. So now the, this is for for resistance. Similarly for the for uh, inductor, it could be like this. Yeah. So what we have in this case, this is I. This is uh, I. And we are measuring the voltage from here to here is the potential difference V. Similarly, here I is going on, and this potential difference here is V. And the equation is V equal to Vt equal to uh, L uh, di over dt. And now you apply the, the uh, Laplace transform, and what do we get? We get Vs equal to we get L. And then we get S, and then we get IS, right? So this is what the the Z is, right? ZS. I think this is a function of S basically. In this case, it's a, in case of resistance, it is a constant. Otherwise, it's a function of S. So ZS IS. And what do you get here? So for a inductor, you have ZS equal to uh, L time S. Yeah, so you have like this. Uh, similarly, for a capacitor, you have a capacitor. Again, there is a current going on I, and we are measuring the potential difference across this uh, capacitor, which has capacitance C. So what do we get? We get C uh, V. This is V. So V, function of T, equal to, uh, we have 1 over C, and then I dt apply Laplace transform, what do we get? Vs equal to 1 over Cs Is, right? Okay, and equal to Zs Is, and hence 
z a is equal to 1 over c s. So what we get is in this case is uh, the impedance we are finding out for the th three cases. In case, case uh, in the case of resistance, it is simply R only. For inductance, we have L times S, and for capacitance, it is one over C S. Now, if there is a two things, the resistance, and then there is a inductor like this. So R, and here it be, becomes S times L. Let us come. So total Z for total becomes G S equal to R plus the S times L, like this. Yeah. yeah, if you have a inductor and then you have a capacitor and for equivalent, uh, how do you get? This is LC, the equivalent will be ZS equal to will be SL plus 1 over S. C times S, like this, yeah. So you get like this. So there, there may be some question I may ask about the impedance, for example. We, we may ask, uh, for given the circuit, uh, what is the impedance? Yeah. So I can say impedance is GS equal to A S square plus something like BS plus D. And then we find out, I will ask what is D equal to what? B equal to what, A equal to what, or something like this. It could be like this. Yeah. So, yeah. so anyway, so this is the impedance. Okay. And now the when it there is a circuit, then how to actually find out what the tensor function. Coming back to the original LCR circuit, we have L first and then R like this. So L R. Okay, and then there is a capacitor here, C, yeah, so like this, and you have output like this. So this is like this, E input, E output, like that. Okay, now if you look at that, we can, uh, we can write, which is equivalent to, uh, we can say here we have Z1S. This is one impedance and like this and there is another impedance here which is z2 function of s yeah so it goes like this so these are both equivalent yeah okay now they say there will be a current now all in complex uh, domain so the current will be ias will also be in the in the complex domain and hence uh, what do you get you get e from here you can write uh, e so this is will be e e input and this will be output e out all in complex domain now okay so we are converted from the time domain here everything function of time so this is from time domain the circuit we have transferred into the the complex complex frequency domain frequency domain or simply we call s domain okay now things become so quite simple now from there so basically what happens the your equation in this case is e i s is equal to z 1 s plus Z2S multiplied by IAS by definition, right? So the voltage equal to impedance multiplied by IA and uh, th this equivalent to resistance, this is voltage, this is uh, uh, current and here also the output will be EOS will be equal to Z2S multiplied by IAS. Okay, and hence the transfer function Ts will be equal to EOS divided by EIS and will be equal to Z2S divided by Z1, Z1S plus Z2S. Okay, 
Now, what is G2S? This is G2S. We know that G2S equal to, we can write here. We know G2S equal to, we can write here. So, where, here, uh, G2S, uh, write G1S first. So, uh, G1S equal to L, Ls plus R, and G2S equal to 1 over Cs. So, you can write here, this is equal to 1 over Cs divided by, we write like this one, Ls plus R plus 1 over Cs. And this is equal to simply 1 over Lc S square plus Rc S plus 1. And we got here the same value as we obtained by actually working on the differential, uh, differential equation. Yeah. So, but it is way faster. Yeah? So, this is gives you a shortcut. It also tells you that if you have a very complex uh, circuit, you can do very easily now. Yeah. So, as long as you know the what is the impedance. Yeah, because of the three components and any complicated circuits also you can do very easily. Okay, so uh, let me give one example uh, that may be in your assignment also. Okay, so may or may not. Yeah, so but uh, this I'm just giving you the examples which may appear. The problem could be something like this. So you have a resistance here and then uh, R1 let us call. Uh, this is the capacitor. Here, then R2, here, this is C1, and this is uh, C2, okay, and here it is like this, okay, let's call it like this, okay, this is E0, uh, EI input, EIT, that means voltage, you may fluctuate here, uh, out, okay, so this, I may ask that find out the transfer function, okay? Ts equal to what in this case, okay? Then how to find out, okay? Easy way to find the first right in, in the, in, uh, impedance, uh, you find out the impedance. So impedance form, this becomes uh, Z1. So Z1 is equal to R simply. Uh, then you have here, z, let's call it Z2, uh, Z2, Z2 equal to 1 over Cs, you have like this. Then you have uh, another one here, so, okay, so this is Z3, call it Z3, and Z3 is equal to R2, and here you have Z4 like this and uh, Z4 is equal to 1 over here C1 C1 here C1s 1 over C2s so this is like this rest is uh, how you find out there is a here EO and there E uh, sorry EI E I, this is E out, okay. We can write here, in order to find out what we're going to do, we will divide into two states. So first you see this one, and then you see this one, as if the first one comes here, you, you can find out what is the voltage here, okay. So let's say this intermediate state, so let's call I1, like this. This is I, let's call I2. Okay, so one, two, three, so two, E2, yeah? Okay, now we can find out in, uh, since it's a complex domain, so we can write e, EIS here, this is EOS here, and this is E2S here. Okay, the next thing is we find out the transfer function. The first stage 
So this is uh, T1 is equivalent to T1 and then you have T2. So, so we have T1 where the voltage you have uh, E, you have E1, uh, EIS, here you have E2S and here you have E out S like this. So this is T1 and T2, right where T1 means this. From here to here is T1 and from here to rest is T2. So T1 is given by, as we done earlier, will be simply equal to Z2 over Z1 plus Z2, right? Right, and T2, T2 will be equal to Z3 divided by Z3 from Z plus Z4, okay? So, what is the meaning of that? The meaning is uh, basically, since this is transfer function T1S, T2S, that tells you that E2S is nothing but equal to T1 times EI. So, this is T1 times EI, EIS, right? And the output E0S is not, nothing but equal to T2 times E2S. E2S, but E2S equal to T1, so we get T1 times T2 times EIS, right? Or simply you get E0 divided by EI is equal to T1 times T2. Mind it, both are a function of S only. So S, T2, S like this, yeah? Now next is, what is, the, this is basically the transfer function. This is the TS we are interested in. But only thing is we have to write in terms of this now, okay? So let's do it. Okay, so what is the next one? Next is the T1 value, we put it here. So we get TS is equal to T1S multiplied by T2S. So what, what do we get? Uh, Z2 times Z3, Z2 times Z3 divided by Z1 plus Z2, Z2 multiplied by Z3, Z3 plus Z4, right, like this. And hence equal to, now we put these values now. So Z2 is equal to one over C1S. Z3 is equal to one over C2S divided by, divided by, and then we have uh, Z1 plus Z2. So it's the R plus, R plus one C1S, R1 basically, this is R1. Multiplied by R2 plus 1 over C2S. So this is the transfer function. Yeah? And uh, we can complete it. So we bring down both of them. And what do we get? We get 1 over, so we can put, uh, let's get this one here. So we get 1 over R1, R1 over C1S. Yeah. Plus, uh, uh, plus. Okay. Uh, just no. It's no. Something is wrong. <clears throat> okay. Divided by um, one over. Uh, get the first one. This uh, comes here, so we get R one, C one S, and this becomes one. And multiplied by simply, this is 1 here, 1, and simply here also R2C2, R2C2S plus 1. Yeah, this is what you get, simply. Or you can expand basically, and we can find out in terms of uh, equal to 1 over, yeah, uh, R1, C1, R2, C2, S square plus 1 plus, so from here to here, plus you get uh, R1, 
C1 plus R2 C2 times S. Yeah. Okay, so this is what the transfer function, the final transfer function from here to here will be equal to 1 over R1 C1 R2 C2 S square plus 1 plus R1 C1 plus R2 C2 uh, divided by, uh, multiplied by S. Okay, so I, I write the final form here. So final form is uh, Ts for this one will be equal to 1 over R1 C1 R2 C2 S square plus R1 C1 plus R2 C2 S plus 1. Okay, this is a transfer function you get for this one. Okay, so I might ask you a question for uh, some values of this one. Or what is a transfer function? Yeah, is it, and uh, there may be some matching type or the actual the values. You know, so I will give you value of this, value of this, 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 and you can find out what is a transfer function. And, uh, I, I, like I may say transfer function uh, looks like 1 over a s squared plus b s plus d and we'll find out a equal to what, uh, b equal to what, d equal to what, so your answer will be r1 c1 r times r2 c2 whatever the value is here r1 c1 plus r2 c2 for example here in this case will be 1 yeah so of course you have to calculate the values you have to tell yeah okay.